Around 1870, large areas of Terra Preta de Indio, or Indian Black Earth soils, were discovered in the Amazon basin. These are extremely stable, fertile soils up to two meters deep with very high levels of organic matter, something that's almost unheard of in the tropics. They were created by thousands of years of indigenous farmers mixing the charred remains from their fires along with organic waste into the soil. The discovery of these Amazonian soils has spurred interest in biochar, or charcoal, that's been inoculated with beneficial microorganisms. Biochar has two intriguing properties. First, it can resist breaking down in the soil for a thousand years or more. And secondly, it has an extremely high surface area. An ounce of biochar may have more than two acres of surface area. This provides excellent habitat for beneficial bacteria and fungi. This great surface area has the ability to hold essential nutrients in a way that makes them available to both plants and diverse soil life. The first of these properties offers long-term benefits. Climates that are changing rapidly because of too much carbon in the air are a major threat to all of us. But that threat is most immediate to low-income growers in the tropics like the millions of campesinos trying to make a living in Central America's rapidly worsening dry corridor. Plants use photosynthesis to take carbon out of the air, but it cycles back into the air too quickly to provide a long-term solution. Biochar's capacity to hold that carbon in the soil for millennia makes it potentially valuable in the struggle to stabilize our climates. The second of biochar's properties make it immediately useful for growing food. The value of biochar is greatest when the char is broken into small pieces, primed with plant nutrients, and then mixed with compost to inoculate it with a wide variety of beneficial soil, bacteria, and fungi. Its benefit is the greatest where it's needed most, on thin or sandy tropical soils with low fertility and low organic matter. Adding biochar to the soil can improve the efficiency of both water use and nutrient use, while reducing soil erosion, runoff, and contamination of surface water. Biochar can be bought at a few farm supply stores or through the internet in the US, Europe, and Japan. But even where it's available, it's far too expensive for low-income families to use in their home gardens. A more realistic option for them is to make some of their own. There are a lot of ways to make biochar at home. Here are two very simple ways and two somewhat more complicated methods. They all use a top lit updraft or tea lud fire to create the biochar. The simplest method is to make a stack of dry brush, wood, or bamboo three or four feet high and light it from the top. You'll probably need some newspaper or very light kindling to get this top lit fire going. Add wood as it burns down. As the fire changes from bright flames to hot coals, douse it good with water. Make sure the fire is completely out. The second simple technique for making biochar is similar, but the fire is largely contained in a pit. This can be a cone about three feet deep and three feet across. We use a pit that's roughly four feet long and two feet wide, two feet deep. This allows us to use slightly longer wood. The pit contains a fire more than the open pile method, and it allows for the fire to be quenched with either water or by piling dirt on top of the coals. The third method uses a 55 gallon metal drum to hold the wood. It has a secondary combustion chamber with a smokestack on top of the barrel to burn off escaping gases. This method burns very clean and puts less pollutants into the air. The top of the combustion chamber can be used to cook on to make use of the heat that's otherwise wasted. The internet has several good plans for modifying metal drums to produce biochar. The fourth method is also more complicated than the pit, but also has the major advantage of using the heat generated by producing the char in order to cook food. 
since about one third of the people on Earth cook with open fires. A high efficiency stove that also produces biochar for the garden has great potential. There are dozens of variations on the biochar cook stove. This one, called Estufa Finca, or farm stove, is from an NGO in Costa Rica. It's cleverly designed from a five gallon metal bucket and sheet metal. The bucket's filled with dry wood, or in this case, dry bamboo. Then it's lit from the top. A second metal bucket supports the cook pot. When the food is cooked and the flames have gone down, the coals are emptied into a third metal bucket. This bucket can be covered to block off oxygen or doused with water. However you make your char, the next steps are pretty much the same. When the piles completely cool, we rake it and pick out any big sticks that haven't charred. They can be set aside for the next biochar run. We then sift the remaining char through a half inch mesh. After that, we sift that char through a quarter inch mesh. We smash whatever doesn't pass through the mesh with a bar or a hammer, then sift it again. We usually use the tamping end of a four foot long steel digging bar, like a harpoon. It's a bit of a workout. There's a lot less dust to breathe if you do the smashing and sifting while the char is still damp from dousing. There's always some char that doesn't sift easily. We just toss that into the compost. The quarter inch sifted char seems about ideal for use in the vegetable garden. Before incorporating it into your garden soil, we usually prime it with plant nutrients for at least two or three days. You can use fish emulsion, manure, or any organic fertilizer. Urine works really well, charging the char with plant nutrients, and the biochar absorbs the smell of the urine. Some people might find this unpleasant, but the use of urine as fertilizer is becoming more accepted, and the combination of urine and biochar has a lot of environmental advantages. After the char has absorbed the plant nutrients, we mix it with at least two parts of compost for every part of treated char. We leave this for at least 10 days to enable the beneficial bacteria and fungi to find homes in the millions of micropores in the char. If you can incorporate a couple of inches of this char compost blend into the top six inches of your garden, your soil and your plants will be happy. Biochar tends to be somewhat alkaline, but the compost usually will buffer that unless you're using a lot of char or if your pH is already high. If you only have a small amount of biochar, adding a bucket of char to three or four buckets of potting soil will get your seedlings off to an excellent start. Because biochar is stable in the soil for hundreds of years, you can add a small amount every year, gradually accumulating the optimal benefit of soil health. So your soil and your plants will be happy for a long time. This is gardening for the long term. Thanks for watching.